Welcome everyone to this Force Friday. Uh, today we are going to talk about the importance of the sketchbook, right? Hopefully something that you all have uh, and why hopefully do you have it, you know? So we're going to spend our time, all three of us, Mertunjay, Swenley, and I discussing different facets around the sketchbook and things to do with it, how to use it, when to use it, why to use it. And I think cumulatively, our goal here today is for you to understand the importance of it. So um, I think we get to, we have a lot of stuff to cover today. Uh, we're going to start with Mertunjay. And before we do so, let me just very quickly say hello to our other force instructors. How are you doing, Swenley? Yeah, good. Looking forward to uh, seeing some amazing sketches. Yeah, it's interesting. I, until you just said that, I was thinking, oh, you know, this is a good thing to bring to mentorship. I don't usually talk about it in mentorship that much, but I think it's a great thing for the three of us to discuss maybe at the very beginning of a mentorship when we just uh, meet students and talk about the sketchbook itself, you know? Yeah. So I'll, I'll have to put that on our, our curriculum list. You know? <laughs> How are you doing, uh, Martin J? Oh, I've been doing good, Mike. Uh, so for you guys, uh, I don't we can't know hear Mike. Today, but there he is. I am yeah. here. <laughs> so anyway, like it's... yeah, I'm very excited too because I've been pushing very hard my mentees to like do the sketchbook thing and like have this documentation coming. You know, with coming up with documentation, like recording your life, and I think that's what uh, our topic is. You know, for for you to tell like how important that is and how it can elevate your living standards as an artist. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So Tunjay is coming to us today from India. It's nighttime and there's a power outage. So <laughs> I don't know how he's running that computer and all. <laughs> he's got it on a, an extra generator or something off to the side, you know. Exactly. Or generator, right. new product. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to put a force sticker on the side of it to make sure that force never goes down. All right. <laughs> All right so, so Mertunjay is going to start us up today whenever you're ready, Mertunjay. It's all yours. Um, all right. And so you got to invite me to the meeting. I, uh, yeah, you should be okay. No, you have control. I'm trying to join from my iPad. So. Oh, that's interesting. I don't have that invitation, though. No. Mm -mm. It's hard when you're in the dark, you know. <laughs> I think so. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a second invite from you. No, you should be having it, I guess. There it comes. Yeah, I clicked on the all link. Co-host, there you go. You're in. So, share content screen. Okay, we'll see. Um, tell me when you see my screen. Yep. Okay. So, uh, here we are with you know one of my favorite topics, which is can can you hear me right now? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So we are here with uh, one of my favorite topics, and this is sketchbooking. Well, uh, sketchbooking is really awesome, I guess, because, you know, there, there's something other than, other than just like observing and looking at things, uh, which is like documentation, which I was like talking about before, you know, in the introduction. And uh, where you do the documentation? Well, we obviously do it, uh, you know, in your sketchbook. Now it may be digital, it may be uh, traditional, which is like old traditional style sketchbooking. But, you know, I really like just to, uh, be curious about subjects and try to like find information about it. Now that's one of the uses of it. Another thing is like uh, preserving memories, you know? So for example, you know, you're going at places, you're going on trips and you are like spending some time with like the nature and the places in there and some culture in there with some people in there and you're trying to try and like sketch them and capture them in your sketchbooks and you return to the home, you see them after years or months and they were like, oh my God, you know, I remember that place. <laughs> It's like all the hustle and bustle and people talking to me about it. And, you know, I, I spend this and that. Now, that is actually really important for me, you know. So we're going to talk like some of the uses of the sketchbook, like how uh, in different ways you can use it. So I have a pretty uh, simple setup right here with the PSD, you know, on the Procreate. The first thing you can see is like writing. Now, the difference between uh, 
what like how a normal person would write a diary you know they would just like write, write down like about what kind of day they spent and you know what was good and bad and what kind of experiences they had now it's a difference between them and us artists because we have this visual tool of drawing okay so what you can do is you won't just write you can also draw with it so i would say but you know writing is also great because you can just like write in some very brief moments is what it, you want to like capture that say oh this person is like really mad at me <laughs> you know and i was like drawing in front of his shop or something and you know you can write that down and yeah that's like another way to like elevate your sketches and uh pres preserving even more memories okay now obviously drawing the second one is just drawing and that's what sketchbook is for when you hear the word sketchbook the first thing that comes is obviously drawing right so drawing what you know you can draw people you can draw places right you can draw small objects right anything you know one of the things that i really like to do is um you know when i'm let's say i'm going to a place uh, if there's like a small souvenir that can let's say fit in my sketchbook let's say a leaf or something and i i think like i saw this um uh, in the animal drawing book as well like mike does this a lot <laughs> he actually uh took like leaves and something like that and like try to like paste it in the sketchbook and do some sketches mm -hmm. over it, something like that you know so right I like to do that too, you know? So yeah, leaves could be one thing, you know, and something like that. Just like try to uh, put it in your sketchbook. So that it actually brings us to, you know, iterate, okay? So yeah, I'm not actually going in the order here, but iteration, so important. We teach iteration a lot, you know, on the website, which is uh, one of the uh, part of the rate process, right? So iteration, you know, which means you are drawing that uh, particular thing again and again to find out the answers. Hmm? You're gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be showing the video actually of uh, two of my sketchbooks and you will see that a lot happening, okay? So iterate, you know, iterate, trying to find the answers. Uh, that's one of the, another goal for a sketchbook is you're curious about something and you're trying to find the answers. Trying to find the answers means uh, which particular uh, part you are interested in. Let's say you're, um, Let's say you're looking at the ripples of the water and you're trying to like find out how they're behaving or something like that. Or maybe you're lo looking at an animal and you're trying to like study their behavior. You're iterating again and again. Yeah? You're drawing different poses. You're drawing different expressions and try to find out how it's how the system is actually working. You know, it could be anything. It could be another like thousands, millions of examples out there, but that's one. Okay. Now, iteration brings us to uh, experimentation and finally failure, right? Iterate means, uh, I can just like replace these both terms. It's just more like synonyms, experimentation and iteration, okay? And yeah, it's actually the same thing, but experimenting with iteration, that, that's one of the things. Uh, that is one of the things. And then finally, it leads us to failure because um, one of the thoughts that I always use is fail faster, learn quicker, okay? So for example, you're doing this very like big painting or something and you're trying to like, experiment a lot onto that it's gonna take a long time okay so maybe you like make some mistakes on that big paint big piece okay like big painting maybe you're spending like 100 hours or like let's say a few weeks onto that and then uh, finally you're like oh this is the mistake that i did you know i'll not do it in the next next one but you are learning super little because now you're not feeling as quicker as you should be okay so sketchbook is a great way, you know, not to just jump on onto the big picture first. I mean, not not to jump on the big, uh, like bigger tries first, but you know, taking these small challenges to like fail quicker, so you can make more mistakes and then can learn more quicker. Okay, so sketchbook, you know, great way to do that. All right, so well, there's a small like run through, you know, of what you can do with your sketchbooks, like what kind of, you know, what kind of things you want to do. And Swanley and Mike is gonna uh, Swanley and Mike are gonna elaborate onto this, like when you want to do it, like how you want to do it. Okay, but uh, let's try to see in some uh, let's try to see in some videos which I planned out, which I shut down today. Of two of my sketchbooks, let's see that. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna disable the screen share from here. Stop share, and then. Start with. Can you give me the permission here? Yeah, you should have it already. No, mm, I don't have it on my PC one. Hmm. Lots of technical issues today, folks. Yeah, yeah, we have. It. Let's see. Oh, maybe I gave it to you when earlier when you left. There you go. Now you have it again. Okay. Cool. All right. 
Can you see the video? Yes. All right. Let's do it. So turn it on. There's a uh, that sketch in the beginning that was really graphite-ish, you know. So it just like shines. <laughs> Anyway, you see, uh, I'm going to talk about the size of it a little bit as well. You see, like this black one here is an A4, and this is an A3. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, this is an A4, this is an A5. Yeah. So this this one is smaller, it's a Strathmore tone tan. I really like to work both on tan and some white. It basically depends on my mood, you know? So, and one of the things that I like about a small sketchbook is it fills really, really fast, you know? <laughs> So at the end of the month, you have like one of these sketchbooks showed up and by the end of the year, you have 12, okay? So yeah, it feels good, you know, just to have 12 sketchbooks at the end of the year. Now see, uh, are there these subjects like related, you know, <laughs> like the foot bones in here and like these two persons in here, like these, this is live sketch and this is, uh, yeah, is one of the museums, you know, so both done at the same place, but yeah, like no relation at all, basically. But you can see like I'm writing down like some of the, like some, something in here, you know? Um, maybe like here some, and they're like dressing, dress like Renaissance man or like with any ancient clothing. So that was like really a unique approach to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, just uh, like visit to the museum, you know? Oh, I actually turned the video up. Would be good to have this upside down video. I don't think I can rotate this, but anyway, so here are some like few face sketches, you know, again, I'm writing like some of these thoughts in here. Some of these are like really, really personal thoughts, you know, by the way. So it it's actually up to you if you want to like show it or not, uh, because I do think that like artists uh, sketchbook is like their diary, you know, so it, it actually depends upon if you want to show it or not, you just want to keep it for yourself. Uh, but actually, you'll see all the things, you know, that I've mentioned before, experimenting, you know, iterating, like failing quicker. You see me actually fail a lot here. You see like that face? Nah. I mean, I was trying to draw it more like, yeah, I mean, uh, more realistically, but like with more realistic proportion, but that kind of like, hmm, ended up not being that good. <laughs> so experimenting, you know, and just, uh, this, this one, I would say is a more successful sketch. Uh, Oh, there's experimentation, okay? You see, like, I'm trading onto that, that silhouette, which I want to find. I actually was, uh, I remember, like, drawing some robot sketches. I want to, like, build some mechs. That's how we usually start with, like, some silhouettes, okay? So, um, yeah, and I was, like, trading a lot in this one. You see, like, some thumbnails in here? I, I wish the video was, like, more rotated, but anyway, you see, like, the, the thumbnails in here as well, okay? So I was like building a concept and these are actually the nail size thumbnails. I was just like figuring out the composition and so on. Here you see a lot of feet sketches. I'm, I'm just like putting in some like gouache, but like gouache background in there again, which is a part of the shows the experiment, right? Here's uh, some gouache as well over a ink brush. Now, uh, sorry, uh, an ink brush. Yeah, yeah, this was an ink brush with some gouache over again, experimenting. This is again a, a good example of iteration and experiment, look at the different faces in here versus the gouache, paintings, you know, like really, really quick though. So, yeah, <laughs> a lot of experimentation again, look at the thumbnails, look at the faces in here. Uh, also, you will see a lot of tools that I'm using, okay? I'm using charcoal, I'm using graphite, I'm using gouache. You now here I'm using some white highlight, you know, pencils. Here I'm experimenting a lot. You see, I have this like big face in here, but I really didn't like it. But I was like, oh, I have this like L shape, uh, you know, this L shape space still left on. So what I did is like, I threw in a face in here, but I then threw in a very long face. And this space is like really wide. So I'm like filling out the space, but if that if that face wouldn't have messed up with the whole space of the, the page in here, I wouldn't have the even thought of like, oh, let me draw a very long face in here. Let me draw a very wide face in here, okay? And this could be the base of, I don't know, maybe like you can do some some composition or something like that. And here I'm experimenting with lighting and here I'm studying the nose. I actually have a thought, by the way, you know, I, um, I actually have a, uh, what do you say, like a promise to myself that I will learn one new thing per day, okay, which I, uh, you know, extensively like write on my notebook, you know, on my sketchbook in the front. 
So every day I'm trying to like learn something new. So for that, that particular reason, you would see like here, I'm drawing a nose, okay? I wanna like learn the anatomy of the nose here or something like that. So maybe you have some, some that kind of resolution for yourself, like one new thing per day, which could be smaller, could be a bigger thing, but yeah, one new thing per day. Here see a lot of ink brushes. Now here I've actually bought a brush pen, which I fell in love with. <laughs> You'd see a lot of sketches with that. Uh, here's a very creative composition that I did. You know, all these faces are from imagination, but instead of just drawing them linearly, you know, I threw in themselves onto top of each other. So you see that face like stick, you know, like really hard under this like really fat face. And this is just falling on top of it. And I could have done it like really lin linearly, but I tried to like throw in a creative composition over top of that. But see again, these spaces are also like different and some of them are from online references, but I kind of threw them into a more of a composition piece, you know? It's like, oh, this space is hanging in there or something like that. Now, uh, this is the part of the imagination. Hmm? Yeah, so you can have like very creative, uh, like a creative approach, you know? Here are some life sketches. Um, this, this cat that you're looking at is actually uh, living in a friend's house, you know? <laughs> And the, the antelopes that you're looking at here, the deers actually is from the zoo. So I'm just like trying to throw them together. Here you will uh, have a look at some mech sketches, okay? So again, very different thing from what you have seen before, right? I was doing like faces and animals and uh, I don't know, like concept art, you know, planning and stuff. But here again, you see like from the silhouette to 3D, you see like uh, knowing perspective, how useful that is, you know, which we teach all the time after the force, so mm -hmm. as a part of the force, I should say. Right? Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> just like jutting down some random creatures. Uh, yeah, again, a creative piece in here. Yeah, I don't know, this this one here, I'm just like, my favorite part of my sketchbook is just like taking a pen and without any thinking much, like without thinking much, just like throwing in whatever I have in mind, you know? So it's just like, all those like very messy, but fun composition. Here I'm drawing skulls. Here's some fish carcasses. <laughs> Here's some boats and like skulls. You see, like it's very random. It's just like filling out the space, but just having fun with it, you know, trying to like study. Here you see part of my church, and it's just, uh, and you see some like uh, skull sketches before, right? Like here, I'm trying to like figure out the different views of the skull. And see right there, again, I have like this, my, I have a skull, by the way, which can like open up from, from this area. And you see like me studying inside of that skull. <laughs> I don't know what that is. And yeah, here's some, some landscape sketches. Okay, I have another video really quickly. So I also want to give time to like, send me a mic as well. Now here's the white sketch, because this one is uh, the A4 size. Okay, now this one is a bigger one. I use this mostly for, uh, what do you say? Like at my at my studio, you know, in my in my home personally, and I take the A5 size sketchbook to uh, to location because it's easy to carry. This is heavy, right? <laughs> now, one of the things that I do with it is um, having sticky notes uh, in my pocket, like all the time. You see, like me writing a lot in the sketchbook because this is part of my uh, research. Right now, I'm working on a big project with big project with mine, right? So it's actually a lot of those kind of things, you know, which I'm actually writing in here. So you see like the figures in here, here's experimentation again. I did some ink sketches that I don't really like. So I took some pens and I was like, oh, let me try to like do something fun with it. So, oh, here's some like quick faces, <laughs> you know, right on top of ink sketches. Uh, here's some animals like a, like a tiger. Oh, again, that, that skull thing. I just want to like do it bigger and, and more carefully. <laughs> yeah, some more brush pen sketches, more brush, pens, brush pen sketches. Oh yeah, I was telling about these, these sticky notes. Yeah, so I do have them in my pocket. I do have a marker with me all the time. Where there's like something which is kind of useful and you know, that, that came into my mind, I actually write it down, you know? It, it doesn't matter if I'm on a wake or I would like stop it by stop by the side of the road now, like write it down because I, I want to remember it later. Then I come back in, you know, into my, in my home and then I'll paste it in my sketchbook there. And that could be anything. That could be like some important work that I have to do on that particular day. 
or maybe some bigger goals or maybe I've seen something, you know, so let's get it down like really, really quickly. And then um, I want to like uh, through that on a, on a bigger scale, you know, afterwards. So, you know, so much of talking. But that is just a part, you know, I have a lot. I mean, how many sketchbooks I've been like 50 by this point, like these kind of hard buying sketchbooks. Uh, but these are what I had the hand, what I had the hand, what I had at the end right now, you know, at, uh, and available to me. And uh, yeah, you will see a lot of versatility and different styles and so on and so on with, uh, you know, with Mike and Sully too. So I'll leave something for them, you know. <laughs> But I hope you enjoy like uh, like a part to my personal side because yeah, sketchbooks are personal, you know. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, so are there any questions, Mike? You know, because I'm not looking at the uh, chat. Right no, now. no, it's been great. I've been mostly talking about people have been asking about music um, to go with drawing, but I loved what you had. I, my question to you is that first smaller sketchbook. How at the very beginning? How long ago did that book start? How long ago? Yeah. That that place um, it's actually last year's <laughs> mm -hmm. but I, I i built it very quickly it's like one one and a half months yeah that's another thing that i like doing i always put the date at the front of my sketchbooks because i like seeing how long it took for me to finish it and then also when i go back years later i like seeing when did this book start you know what part of my life was this where was i where was i living you know because i could tell obviously right away from the date in the book but when i'm in the book I like seeing that day to go, damn, I finished this book in three months or darn this one. I've been in it for two years. <laughs> I'm still not finished. You know? Yeah. yeah that's, cool. have, that, that's a cool idea, by the way, I'll kind of write I try to like write it on my, on the main front page where, where I started it. Yeah. Uh, but what do I have is like on the particular sketchbooks, I have the date written. So yeah, but this is a great idea, you know, <laughs> Yeah, the other piece to that that I've done with my sketchbooks over the years is I also on the binder, I put a number. So because after a while, they were, I was losing track, right? I have to open them to find out the order. So I put a number on the binder. So when they're sitting on a bookshelf, they're all in the order of chronological, you know, so they're also easier to grab that way, you know, so I can look at like sketchbook 18, you know, and pull that out and see what date it was and when it started. It's all like, <laughs> it's all organized, yeah. you know. Right, right, right. Yeah. Very good. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, very welcome. All right, who's up? All right, who's up? Am I up or you're up, Swanley, right? Uh, you're next. I'm next. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm ready, so that's good. I'm ready to roll. So I'm going to cover more of the, um, like, how do you use it? What are we, what are we drawing, right? And, you know, so I want to... Um, I'm going to be sharing with you a bunch of my sketches and I, I want to dig in a little bit to what I was doing, where I was within all these sketches. Uh, what, what we really want you to leave here with today is these sketchbooks are, uh, as Matunjay said, you know, they're, they're a diary, they're their journal. And what is more important in this world than your own life, right? I love the fact that I can go back to my sketchbooks and look through my college years. My first sketchbook that I kept that's like in a hardcover book, it was really the beginning of freshman year of school, right? I have other drawings from when I was younger. Kind of, they're kind of random and they're on like loose sheets of paper. But my sketchbook progression really started freshman year of college because the teacher said, I wanna make sure you have a sketchbook. You should be carrying one around with you all the time, right? And then through the years, I learned what kind of sketchbooks I like, you know, I like better, which ones I don't like as much. And I started learning the things that I was just telling Matunje, you know, I typically at the front of my sketchbooks always put the start date of when the book began. That's just my own analness. Like I like the organization of that. Um, I would always put quotes at the front inside cover of all my sketchbooks of, it doesn't have to be artists. It could be artists. Uh, it could be whomever. It could be from a film, whatever it is, things that really inspire me right at the front of the book that I want to make sure I carry with me throughout that book. Right. And Ratunjay did a great job of showing, I think, images with lots of writing mixed with um, drawing, uh, you know, and what are you drawing? Why are you drawing it? And so on, you know, let's see, all of a sudden the chat's going bonkers. Uh, uh, let's see, before I get in this, we've got a whole bunch of things going on here. Uh, Redacted was said with dystopian, do you mean like dark angel? Yeah. You know, dystopian is dark sci-fi, which happens to be one of my favorite genres. So yes, when it comes to the music, Edward said, are you laying down any pencil lines for the ink sketches or just pumping them right in? 
If you're asking about mine, um, anything you usually see here in ink was done directly with ink. I didn't, I didn't work it. I don't, I've seen people use their sketchbooks to really create like nice illustrations. Um, I've never been one to do that. Like Mertunjay had some really beautiful rendered um, figures in there. And I don't know if Mertunjay did that for the sake of that or like it was, hey, let me learn, you know, to render this, right? Either way, it gets to this piece. And sometimes I do that, but it's pretty rare. My sketchbooks, because I'm a, you know, I'm a primarily a line artist, it's usually line drawing. And for me, it's line drawing and design and like telling story. You know, story is always a big thing. And I kind of switch my mindset across those depending on what's going on. Like, what am I after, right? What, what's my goal in this, right? And it, it goes all over the place. Little vignettes, meaning things that aren't framed are usually drawings of like people doing things. You know, it's like little stories of people doing things. But I usually draw in frames quite a bit. And you'll see that as I show you some of my work because I like composition so much and I like trying to tell a story in the box. So you'll see a lot of that here today. Uh, redacted one figure I love to use for poses, sticky bones. I've always, Valerie said, I always put the start and end date on the inside. Yeah, on the spine and the sketchbooks, I always have two or three running at once. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't do that in the past. I literally always went from the end of one book to the beginning of another. Lately, I've been doing that. I'm more controlled than that usually. It feels a little sloppier to me than, than that. But to what Mertunjay did, sometimes I might have a book that has colored paper in it, which I do very rarely. I have one book. Unfortunately, I just packed up a lot of my stuff uh, because we're finally getting our house fixed for those of you that know anything about that story. Um, but I have like one book that's got lots of different colored papers in it. That's been with me for probably seven years because every so often I'll go over and do some drawings in it. Uh, but then usually I, I'll... You know, I have like, I like sketchbooks that are um, spiral bound because I like opening it and closing it, you know, making it flat to one side or double opening it. Um, that's something I really enjoy. Uh, let's say I always have two or three running at once, one for sketching live in public, one for slow ink. And yeah, so that's cool. You know, you, that's cool, Valerie. So you have the way you're organizing them into uh, processes, really. Yeah, one for storyboarding, thumbnails and film. Uh, let's see. Okay. You know, it's Edward said, when you lay them out, oops, I just love that. Uh, da, da, da. And when you lay them out, do you see a progression of ideas? Typically? Yes. Usually I'm like building one thing on top of another. Moppet said, your sketchbook's amazing. I'm guessing it's from Matunji, which I would agree hundred percent. Don's going off to work. Counter pasta, very inspiring Matunji. Any tips for sketching animals at the zoo? I've been going as much as I can. Uh, you have any tips for the zoo, Mertunjay? Uh Yeah, I do have. Actually, what you do is uh, you first want to start with the very basic animals, like let's say big birds, so you can understand the force animal shape. And then uh, you can actually go to uh, more of a compli complicated ones. If you're asking about like how to draw animals while they're moving, the one thing you just got to do is... Um, you know, like sketch them a little bit. And when they come to the same position, you get like a, another picture of your drawing. Okay, so <laughs> another part of your drawing. Okay, so that's one. And uh, yeah, that's what I can say, you know, start with simple, simple animals, you know, just like big birds and like seals or something like that, if you have them at your zoo. And then just go on to like plenty great animals and then digit great and then finally ungly great animals, which are like the hooped animals. Mm -hmm. And that. Yeah, I've also done, I usually start with seals and then go through the process Matunji was mentioning. And I'll, sometimes I'll even just draw the animals blind, meaning just stare at them and just draw them in their different positions very quickly on the page and then go back and re-reference them for their anatomy and their spotting or color. But at least I have the gesture down blindly, you know, like just really fast, you know, and then build up thereafter and kind of pull reference from them. I do that with people a lot too, by the way. Um, yeah, you have have I ever on, used, excuse me? You have, you have them on the thumbnail as well. So whoever has mm -hmm. a question today, like how, how quickly like Mike has thrown down the silhouette of the beer here, like very, very quickly. Yes, yes. Like a marker and then. Yeah, this was a fat marker. Yeah, so this would, these are very fast to your point. Yeah, I'm just like cranking out silhouettes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Redacted asked about black wings. Uh, they are good. I think black wings are good. Would you rather draw, rather people sketch with a pen or with graphite? That's a great question. Um, it's funny, I think in sketchbooks, 
I usually work more in pen than I do graphite. And I think it's more of a neat freak thing. I hate after time how everything gets like grayed out and uh, smudged over time. And I'm, not, I'm too lazy to sit there and spray fixative and stuff, every, all that stuff on it. So I'll usually use pens in my sketchbooks, which I, I think also is what leads me to working more on composition and design. Uh, let's see, Raphael. Hello, Raphael. Uh, with pen, you have to be careful as you cannot erase the lines. Exactly. So depending on the kind of pen you use, if you use ballpoint, you could actually draw with soft touch and come in light and build up. Crayons when practicing from Moppet. I used to draw with crayons before, also pastel. Yeah, the one supply on this planet Earth that I really do not like is pastels, but that's me. It's just too messy for me. Uh, fat marker. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, super fat markers. Any thoughts on the Tombow? I'd like Tombows as well. All that stuff's good. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, I have a, a whole combination of things here, and I just want you to show you, I guess, more than anything, what we'll see here is all of the different uses that I go through with my sketchbook. You know, here, these are very clean, simple, like black and white drawings in boxes. So I'm, I'm in like graphic design head here. Now, the reason I was, was because I allowed myself to be affected by the environment I was in. This was at MGM Studios, which I think is now called Hollywood Studios, which is one of the Disney parks in Florida. And it's got this, um, this aesthetic, uh, which I just blanked on, not Art Nouveau. Um, what is this called again? You know, it's like just super, super graphic design, right? So I went to tools that would allow me to, Art Deco, Art Deco. Right, that would allow me to work like this. So it's kind of interesting. Think about that, right? Like what tools are going to help support the look and feel of the artwork, right? That's kind of interesting. It's also kind of cool because to like what Tunjay was doing before, you're using all different kinds of supplies uh, to present different ideas, right? And that goes across different art movements, right? So that's, that's an intriguing concept. Uh, this one I drew at the medieval section at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And I was in an area where they had all these um, religious paintings from hundreds of years ago. So this was an image of me drawing the saints that were actually drawn there. And I composed this image to kind of show the power of the saints over the masses, basically, and said, like, here's all these people and all, you know, how they were responding to them. And here's these like main saints, right? So I created an illustration right there on the spot. I mean, somebody could take this and literally just throw this in a magazine, right? And say, here's an illustration about these particular saints, what their lives were like, and so on and so on, right? Uh, and then I did the same thing here. This is also at the Met. Uh, they have a medieval room. And if you've ever been to New York, they have this awesome medieval room with a bunch of knights on horses in this room. So I turned it into an army, <laughs> right? In this like path winding, you know, through this darkness. And then you can see that's mixed down here with um, just a close up of one of the horses. I was just looking at how the armor was built and where, you know, all the rivets and stuff were and a little bit of the decoration on the side. So interesting combination of, again, a composition story that I was inspired by based on the image. And then I did like a little detailed drawing on the bottom that's more of a study, right? So, you know, things changed up. This, you could see the note textural down here, right? So this was done at Epcot and this is Japan in Epcot. I wish it was the real one, but it was, uh, this was years, years, years before I ever visited Japan. But I was thinking of Van Gogh when I drew this. So you can see the bark here in the tree. I was trying to make purposely little dashed lines to kind of mimic the bark and the movement of the bark across the tree to bring this other level of reality into the imagery, right? A lot of these images, my goal was like, how close to real can I get my sensation of real just using line to represent these ideas, right? So that's what was happening over here. You could see there's perspective in there. You could see my lighter, thinner ink lines. You know, there, this was, um, if you look real closely up here, you'll see there were a bunch of guys banging on these huge drums. And these are all tourists, including myself, right? Sitting in the shade because it was hot out that day. I remember specifically it being very hot. So they're all sitting in the shade here under these trees. You know, these guys are out more in the sun. These guys are smarter. They're hanging back under the shade of the trees. 
you know, watching this show. And then this is what the location looked like. So here's sort of an establishing shot of what we just saw there, right? Here's the building. You can see the drummers are up there. I think it looks like they're getting ready and people were probably piled up down here under these trees, right? And this is what the whole Japan area looked like, right? And you can see, I wrote this note here. It said studies in the relationship between texture and culture, right? This was also in Epcot. So I was making, Epcot, by the way, is an amazing place to draw because there's like a little flavor of different cultures. You're going around the world all in one park, right? Without flying from place to place. Now, would I tell you, that, is, it, is that better than actually going to these places? No, but from a drawing standpoint, amazing, right? You can get around and feel the style of each location in all in one day. So this was France and here was Art Nouveau, right? So here you could see I'm pulling out with black the shaping of the Art Nouveau. It's always like curly melted wax to me, right? So I was doing that over here. Here I was using black. This was a brush pen uh, like Redacted was bringing up before. That's a composition to me. So that's a thumbnail, right? I'm putting this heavy black on the top. It's on the third, it's leaves. There's people back here walking around. There's a little bit of the building. You can see the thin strip on the left, the bigger on the right. So that's me composing. Here's another one, just cleaner. But I can't tell you how much I love this. I could just do this all day long. Like I love problem solving within shapes. It's like organizing books and organizing things. I love organizing stuff. Um, yeah, I just love it. This drawing is probably one of my favorite drawings in my entire life, believe it or not. This little drawing here. Nobody would ever know that, but I'm sharing that with you guys here. I love the sort of wonky asymmetry of this, and yet the perspective is there. I love these little stacks sticking out of the top of the building. It feels like it's out of an Ed Burt, not Tim Burton film. And I just really, really enjoy this drawing. I had a lot of fun drawing it, and I love the look and feel of it. It's just so quirky, and I love that about it. And I still love it. I did this 20 years ago, and I still really like that drawing. Um, this is some bears at the zoo, as Mutun Jay was talking about before, with like a really fat chiseled brush. So I'm a line guy, right? But I was trying to get to the shape fast. But you can see there's still line in there. You can see on this guy, I drew with a fat edge, but I still kind of drew the contour and just, but I wanted to get to the fill in quickly. So if you look through any of these drawings, you know, you'll see there's that thinner edge of the line there. You can see the shape down here. And then I just filled it in very quickly to get the silhouette. And I loved playing with it. You know, I love this. Like, I remember this zoo trip. I did this with a bunch of uh, gorillas too. Uh, I love the idea of these like big hairy shapes. And then I would draw in with a thinner line, their faces and their claws and stuff. So I got the detail of the face and this big hairy, puffy, shapey thing. I just love that contrast. So you could see that I kept doing that with his face. And I just loved, I, I just loved that. I was really intrigued by that and really enjoyed it. Uh, this is a mixture of, um, what is that called? Animal Kingdom. Yeah, this is Animal Kingdom. This was Italy, if I'm not mistaken, over here on the left. And this is all Animal Kingdom. So these are like projects, right? I'm coming up with projects on the fly while I'm in the location. So you can see here I wrote, huh, these are posters for masks, right? Like I'm using masks on this one. I started using the patterns of Africa to create these posters. And then I moved from the mask piece, right? So this, this, this one particularly is a poster off the mask. And I started using the, the culture's iconography, its symbolism, its patterns to help it evoke the idea of a poster for Africa. Like maybe it looks like this. I'm using their colors, right? And it's interesting how from an art direction standpoint, if you grab the elements you could really understand a culture and how it's been put together and then use it, right? Manipulate it in a different way to create new art, right? So here's Africa. So pattern, color, these tops are the, um, the like hay rooftops, right? These like thatched roofs. So I threw them in as these abstract uh, triangular shapes. Uh, this was like a crowd, I think was looking at a stage. And then these were guys that were playing drums that were their entertainers. And then this was one of the streets there at the park. You would never know, right? Like looking at this, it looks like I was in the, you know, somewhere in Africa, right? But this is actually at the park. Well, maybe that would give it away because that's like a, a, what do you call one of those sky, uh, you know, sky trolley things, right? Like up in the air. <laughs> so I don't know how much of that's flying around Africa, okay. but you know, the colors again, I'm using the colors, you know, in the space, you know, to try to evoke a feeling of the culture, right? So lots of culture stuff going on here. 
Now, I, I, I'm happy and sad to admit this, but I'm definitely a TV junkie. I love movies. I love television. Um, so one time that I draw a lot where I can kind of be a little brainless because I don't have to come up with some massive idea is just me responding to what I'm watching. So this is a combination of lots of different things going on here, right? Here are really simple, quick sketches of compositions, right? Just in pen, I'm just blocking out shapes, right? Very simple. And like, I love that. Look at the shape of the guy's head and his big shoulder and then Agamemnon. This is from Troy. So that's Agamemnon sitting in the back and that pattern going right across the top, right? The face on the thirds with all the soldiers behind him, right? I just, I just love it. And then I love, I, I was a caricaturist, right, for years. So I love pushing things, right? This is Eric Bana, the actor. And I really wonked out like the face angle, his head, the heavy brow. I love this drawing of Brad Pitt that I did because it looks kind of monkeyish, you know, and everyone talks about how handsome Brad Pitt is. And it's not like I don't think he's a handsome guy, but I thought I kind of really captured him here with a ballpoint pen, right, in a sketch. It made me realize things about him, like, wow, look at the length of his forehead. He's got this long upper lip, you know, down to his little mouth, right? But I think I did a great job on that, actually. I don't talk positively about my work a lot, but I'm like, damn, that is a good drawing of Brad Pitt. You know, here's another of Eric Bannis. Eric Bannis got a huge brow, you know, like really heavy brow and a strong jaw, you know, just a lot of fun, like playing with this stuff. I really like this drawing too, actually. I like the weird quirkiness of the abstract shape, you know, just the big overall abstraction and how I like squeezed his head in there and look at the giant shoulder and the little head just playing around. I, I love that too, you know. And then here's more of just a force drawing of a horse that was in the film, right? Yeah, so you can see me designing. It's a little bit more animation and style, right? But all the shaping is there, all the force stuff. You can see this was from a film called King Arthur. Yeah, just so much fun. These are all caricatures of people I worked with when I was at LeapFrog. I worked at LeapFrog, which is an educational video game company for kids. For I was there almost four or five years. And, uh, you know, in meetings, I would doodle the people I was sitting in meetings with, like, all the time, right? You could see Dove over here. I drew Dove many times. I love drawing him. So there's three of him over here, right? Yeah. He was all into computers. He was like our tech guy, just a genius, really smart guy, really fun, awesome personality. So I, I drew zeros and ones up by his head, just thinking, like, oh, that's probably what he's thinking about. You can see David here. I drew David quite often as well, you know? Just had fun, you know, fun with people's shapes. It would keep me awake in the meetings, you know, as well, keep me aware. These are me just doing character sketches. So explorations, as it said, in a uh, different medium. Again, going back to the culture piece, right? Here's a fireman. So I just doodled this out of my head. It's not from reference or anything. Um, and I used, um, what was this? It wasn't graphite. This, I think, might have been the color of pencil. Like, I used the side of it, and I wanted the fireman's clothes to feel charred, right? So I was going for that charredness and that's what I was trying to capture. So I got it as a shape. You can see some places there is no line capturing the edge of it, right? This is just watercolor. So I shaped in the people's heads, just the shape. And then I drew with ink and I went back to watercolor, drew the line and I was like back and forth, back and forth. It's always a fun exercise, right? You start with the shape and shove the face into the shape, right? So I did that. This is just graphite, right? So I drew this kind of elvish knight, very forceful design, right? Super fluid, shapey design again, kind of like the horse was on the prior page. Last but not least, um, this was from work. So sometimes I would draw sketches from my job, you know, and I would just sit there and try to figure stuff out in the sketchbook. You guys have probably seen this before this page. It's just probably one of my favorite work pages of all my years working in production. Um, it was one of my most favorite jobs as well. It was this game called Mythica that was going to be from Microsoft. In the end, they canceled it. They were like $10, $15 million into development. And then they ended up canceling this game, which was very unfortunate because I got to see it at Microsoft headquarters in uh, near Seattle. And it was amazing. I have to say, amazing game. Um, heavily inspired by Walt Simonson. Like this in the top right was very Walt Simonson um, inspired. Walt Simonson is one of my favorite comic book artists. So I was looking at, he did a lot of the Thor stuff. So it was Viking. So I was looking at his work. And then the other things are just me drawing out of my head, like this guy here on the left. So that's all I have to share today. I mean, I have, you know, again, tons and tons of sketchbooks. Uh, and who knows, maybe we'll do another pass at this in the future again. 
what I wanted to share with you was, you know, like what to draw, right? So hopefully I, I wrote this quick list. If you're drawing, you know, if you're learning how to draw, you could, you know, you could do your homework in your sketchbook, right? Like solve problems, figure out what the subjects are that you're trying to figure out. How are you going to get through them, right? How are you going to get better at this? Um, ideas. Lots of times I use my, my sketchbook for idea exploration. I might have a cartoon idea, a comic book idea, whatever. It might be an idea for the website. I might be drawing flow charts, <laughs> right? It's like, oh, how do I want a student to learn this particular subject? I'm going to go from here to here to here to here. It might be something going on in my life, like me moving. And I might have a flow chart or something in there. I have sketchbooks right now of like where I live and where, what we want the backyard to look like, right? So I'll design stuff in the sketchbook to say, hmm, you know, what do I want that? What do I want that to be? Right. So it's all these different ideas, idea generation, right? Just great place to think. We're artists. And the more I think about this, I can't emphasize on you enough the importance of using this skill to draw, to create pictures, to problem solve, right? We talked quite a bit about this uh, a couple of sessions back with like Leonardo da Vinci and so on, right? Like the Renaissance guys. So draw to solve problems, figure out ideas and their answers. So you, you become a more powerful, more powerful human being um, by the mere fact that you're learning how to draw, okay? Um, uh, the obvious, which we've shared with you today, are your surroundings, right? Your surroundings and experiences. This is an awesome diary, right? Like I said, I love that I can go back to college. I have drawings I did of my wife when I just met her, right? I'm like, wow, this is like when I met my wife. Like, here it is, right? This is stuff I was like thinking about. I have drawings of me commuting on the train to school, right? So that's all in there, right? Like someday when I'm not here, my life is captured in these sketchbooks, right? People can go through this and go, wow, like here's what Mike was doing in 1998, right? Where was I? What was I drawing? What was I thinking about, right? Um, goals, you know, so I, I told you I wrote stuff in the front of my books. I would write quotes. I would write goals. I would write the dates. Goals is definitely one of them. You know, it's very personal to your thing. And the more important it is, is based on how much you use it and how you learn how to use it. How do you use this as best as possible? Kind of goes to like, how do you learn, right? Are you a good learner or not? And you drawing is a great way to learn how I, I have a hard time just like listening to stuff and understanding through listening. I'm a genius when it comes to somebody telling me stuff and me being able to visualize it, then I can get anything. If I can make a picture of it, it doesn't matter if it's like the deepest math problem or some science thing. If I can sketch it out to solve it, I can figure it out. If I'm just told it, I'm like, I don't understand what you said. Like I, I get in conversations with my wife about that all the time. I'm like, ah, I think I need a whiteboard or something. I don't know what you're talking about, right? Um, quotes, which we talked about, and then last but not least, jobs, right? Like I mentioned earlier. So I hope that, like I said, what we do today by the end of all this is inspire you, you know, and I'm going to close my section with, you know, if you can't experience it, draw it or both, right? I just went race car driving last weekend, right? Like I tried NASCAR, believe it or not, for the first time. And I would choose driving the car over drawing the car because I think life is about your experiences probably more than anything. But I would say that first. And then second, though, is why not draw it also, right, to understand it, especially if you could draw it after you also did it. That gives you deeper understanding about the thing that you're drawing, right? So, and besides that, you have that memory. Again, you've got that diary, you've got that memento, right? So, you know, you want to learn to basically just draw as much as you can, right? It's a visual and written journal of your entire life, right? So keep it up, use them to solve your problems, make your life better, become a smarter, deeper individual, a more acute individual, meaning be more visually adept at your surroundings and being aware of things. I am hyper, hyper, hyper aware of people and environments and surroundings visually. I have to say, I'm very good at that. I'm good at, you know, coming from animation too, like people's mannerisms and stuff like that, drawing that stuff out, what people look like, how people move, what they think, how animals work, perspective, architecture, right? Nature, like I'm very aware of all that stuff. And when you sit down to draw it, you get even more hyper aware, right? Because now you're focused. Normally you're walking around day to day, a lot of your, you know, your brain shuts all that information down. 
But um, otherwise, you know, you sit down and look and you really absorb and learn that space, right? All right, that's it for me. I'm gonna close up and hand it over to, uh, to Swenley, all right? Yes, thanks, Mike. That was awesome. You're welcome, thank you. So let's go over here and then we have the uh, magic question, you know, like we want to keep sketchbooks, we want to improve, but when are we going to do it and how are we going to, to, to schedule our time to accomplish that goal? You know, I wanted to start with this quote of Benjamin Franklin, which says, if you plan, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. And in my own experience, um, you know, like, uh, the last couple of months, I've been kind of like winging it with, with my own uh, studies, you know, and sketching. And I quickly realized that I improved much faster when I had like a clear plan and set clear goals for what I wanted to uh, um, achieve with, uh, with my art. You know, for example, you can say, well, I want to improve a pers perspective. Well, that's a good start. But then you need a plan of attack of how you're going to do it. You know, like I've tried both. And for me, if, if there isn't like a clear plan and a schedule, it's not going to work, you know, at least not as effectively as um, when I have a clear plan of attack. So that brings us to the question, when will you study? You know, and and uh, in general, a task that is not attached to a day and a time rarely gets done, you know, so you can say, well, I'm going to fill one sketchbook a month. Yeah, great. But when are you going to do that? You know, and especially when you grow, uh, when you grow older and get more responsibilities, if you don't plan something, you know, and set like a clear uh, uh, um, day and time for it to be done, very easy for it to be overlooked, you know, or for you to end up doing other stuff, you know, and maybe wasting your time instead of being effective. So it starts with setting goals, set clear goals. What do you want to achieve uh, with your sketchbook? And then you have to uh, set days and times that you're going to uh, pursue those goals, you know, so you know clearly in your mind what you're going for. And of course, we all have the same 24 hours a day. You know, a good way to see it is kind of like having a budget of $24, euros or whatever currency that uh, you're using in your country. And if you're given 24, let's say dollars to keep it simple. If you're given $24 a day, that means that you cannot buy everything with it. You know, and the same with time. We each get a budget of 24 hours. So we need to be wise with how we spend it. You know, like I said before, uh, again, if I look at my own life, like back in the days when I was a student, you know, I was young, didn't have many responsibilities. So um, I didn't have like a like a clear um, schedule. You know, I was kind of like winging it in my mind. I had an idea of when I wanted to do stuff. But as I grew up and more responsibilities started to come in, I started to become more and more uh, conscious of the value of my time and the importance of uh, scheduling that time, you know, so I don't waste it on, on stuff that is not going to help me uh, achieve my goals. You know, to give an example, I love, I used to love playing video games, but at a certain point I realized, well, it's nice, but it takes up a lot of time and I would rather invest this time in growing my artistic skills. You know, so as painful as it was, I at a certain point decided to stop playing video games and dedicate that that time to uh, refining my craft, you know. And I still, I mean, if I go to a friend's house, I could play, you know, but when I'm at home, I um, I rather study and, and improve my arts rather than, you know, spending time on, on something else. And then we come to the... Uh, I would say one of the main struggles that I see some students um, uh, deal with, and that is what is better, you know, to practice a little bit daily or to do one long session a week. 
And I read a, a book about how our brain works uh, a couple of years back. I don't recall the name of the book. But one thing that I learned out of that book that really solved this problem for me is that whenever you learn something new, if you don't, if you don't um, like recall and, and rehearse that information for, if you don't recall or rehearse that information, it's going to literally disappear from your mind in 48 hours. You know, you need to repeat whatever new information you want to, to learn and memorize. You need to repeat that at least a couple of minutes daily in order for it to literally take root in your mind, you know, and then the information is, is stored, stored up in your brain. So based on that, it's better to practice a little bit every day. Let's say you do 30 minutes to one hour per day versus not doing anything for the whole week. And then you only practice, let's say 12 hours on Saturday, you know, not the best way to practice because most of that information during the next couple of days that you don't do anything with it is going to literally vanish from your mind you know so it's not that effective so it's better to uh, schedule consistent daily practice and um, you know i know some of our students have part-time jobs some have full-time jobs so it can be hard to come home you know after a long day of work and still find the time to open your sketchbook and draw but um it's uh you have to do you have to just be disciplined you know if you want to achieve something it's going to cost some sacrifices you know so it's just about disciplining yourself and find out what inspires you to draw like inspiration is like a big energy boost you know it trumps laziness procrastination even tiredness you know and i'm sure most of you would have experienced that at some point in your life, you know, you might be super tired and then you see something that inspires you and all of a sudden you feel energized and, and, and ready to draw and to create, you know, so discipline and inspiration, super important to help you keep the consistency, you know, so again, better to practice a little bit every day than just having one long session a week and then let's say for six days you don't do anything. You got a. Uh... You got a cool sticker from Valerie, by the way, Swanley. <laughs> <laughs> cool, thanks, well. Yes, for the investment. And yeah, and then the next thing is schedule time versus drawing all the time. You know, I've heard um, the advice given by many artists to, you know, have your sketchbook with you always and always draw. And I mean, if it works for you, I would say go at it. You know, for me at this point in my life, I would say it's not realistic for me to be drawing the whole day. You know, I have other responsibilities besides art. So uh, there's really like a scheduled time for me to, to sit down and, and to study. You know, when I was younger, again, would have been easier for me. It was easier for me to, to draw uh, the much for the majority of the day, but with all the other responsibilities that comes with growing up, you know, having uh, being married having other responsibilities, not realistic. And I can say in my own experience, it's, uh, I didn't notice that it affected my skills, you know, by not being able to draw the whole day. You know, again, a little bit every day is better than not doing, uh, not drawing for an extended period of time during the week and then just sitting down one day and then going at it. You know, and the best combo, of course, is if you do have the possibility to draw, let's say, maybe five, six hours a day, and then you do it the whole week, go at it. You know, that would be great. Uh, this is a helpful book that uh, I've read in the past called Time Management from the Inside Out. And the great thing about this book is it really helps you to manage your time based on your personal needs. You know, again, we're all different. We all have different schedules. So what works for one person not doesn't necessarily work for the next person. So I recommend this book. You know, check it out. And then for myself, at this point in my life, you know, with being a full-time uh, teacher at drawingforce.com, um, I schedule at least 
two hours of practice daily. You know, I'm a firm believer in the fact that in order to be a great teacher, I have to be an even better student than the people that I teach because I can only teach what I know. You know, I cannot show them the paths if I stay behind. So I have to make sure that I keep studying and I keep uh, practicing to, to better my skills so I have enough material to teach. You know, and that varies from quick sketches to more elaborate studies like you see here. Like lately I've been studying, um, I've been focusing more on structure, you know, like you can see here, like zooming in on certain details and um, let's see what more do we got. Yeah, so more studies, you know, and I, I, I have like color pencil on the side so I can draw the arrows. So for my mind, it's clear that I'm studying and not just creating beautiful drawings. More here. So this was when uh, we did a video a couple of weeks back called uh, uh, It Takes Courage to Draw. And I watched that video a couple of times. You know, and just to get get myself in that mind sp space of excitement and awe, you know, and that's why I was writing my thoughts as I was studying, you know, like when Tunji brought up, you know, it's a combination of drawing and writing just to uh, uh, keep your mind focused, you know, on, on learning and 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 uh, stay in a certain mindset, you know, when you're creating. More here, I here was practicing drawing shadow shapes on the figure. And then in terms of sketchbook, of course, you want to pick a sketchbook that's, that, uh, that fits you uh, or that fits the situation that you're in. When you're home, it's handy to have like a bigger sketch pad. You know, I personally work on H3 paper, uh, big and uh, enough room for me to uh, to uh, draw big and you know do a lot of like zoom in on the details and stuff and then when you're on the road it helps to have a pocket sketchbook you know back when I was a student and I used to commute by train I had a pocket sketchbook which I drew people in the train or you know whatever uh, caught my attention in the environment last but not least also make sure to plan time to rest you know, you don't want to burn out yourself and, you know, not don't have like the passion and energy to draw anymore. Resting is as much as a verb as working. And I think sometimes we overlook that. We focus so much on work, 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 but you need time to rest and recalibrate, you know, and, and uh, re-energize yourself, you know, and a lot of things become clear during times of rest, you know, sometimes when you're so busy and you might so, uh, Locked up with all kind of information. It's hard to think clearly, understand certain stuff. And then you take a rest and things start to fall into place. So um, that's my part. You know, hopefully you find these tips useful and uh, think about how you will spend your time. You know, set your goals with your sketchbooks, uh, be realistic and balancing the different responsibilities that you have, and focus on consistent daily practice instead of you know just drawing one day for a couple of hours and then not doing anything the rest of the week yeah i think for me right. what happens is too too much is when i start resenting you know when i start <laughs> resenting it i get frustrated then i'm like all right i need a break i'm i'm burning out you know otherwise i can go pretty yeah. damn far to get there but once i'm like i hate <laughs> drawing <laughs> i need to take a break yeah, then you know that's not going the right direction. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope that we inspired you to go pick up your sketchbooks or buy one if you don't have one. If you don't have one, you should get a sketchbook, right? Nothing more important in your own life and figuring yourself out, pro you know, solving your own problems, going and enjoying the world through the eyes of being an artist, right? There's a reason why artists have sketchbooks, right? Accountants don't walk around with sketchbooks, right? So it's like, why do we? Because we're based on visuals and you're learning the language of drawing and what better way to record all of this than a good sketchbook, right? So thank you again, Swanley and Ritunjay. Um, 
uh, we will see you guys next week. Like I said, next week will be a pre-recorded session. Swanley and Mertenje will be here to answer questions. You guys will get to watch the three of us demo the new uh, brush pack. I put a link in here today in the chat, but you'll see the link in the description for next week as well. Um, like I said, we've been getting great feedback on it. And I'm very excited about these new brushes. They've been working out really well. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys. I won't see you next week. You'll see me in the recording. I will see you the week after, but Mitun Jay and Swanley will be here to hold down, uh, hold down the fort, All right? Take care, everyone. Have a great week. Thanks again, guys. See you guys. Bye. Bye -bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah. All righty.